Well, 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 somebody call Al Gore up and let him know that global warming is happening. Today is February 1st and I'm ice fishing and it's 44 degrees out. I'm in the heart of the ice belt, Minnesota here, and it's extremely warm, but that's good. That's good for pike fishing and that's what we're doing today. So, what do you need to pike fish, you might ask? Hmm. For starters, you need a quality tip up. This is my quality tip up right here. It's made out of wood, it's extremely strong, hardy, doesn't get broken in my bucket. I love this tip up. It's bad to the bone and it's rough like me. So. Besides a tip-up, I also like to use an iFish Pro 2.0. It's exactly like the tip-up, except you fight the fish on your rod. I'll explain more about that later. Besides that, you need a big old pile of sucker minnows right here. You can get these at any local bait store near you, but uh, finding big ones, that can sometimes be a challenge. But I found some decent ones today. Thanks to the boys at Prior Lake Bait and Tackle, they hooked me up with some decent sized sucker minnows. So hopefully we can take down some pike with these bad boys today. And harnessing my giant suckers today will be my big tooth rigs right here. They've got strong leaders, giant treble hooks, straight up pike killers. So the body of water I'm fishing today is not a conventional lake, it's not a river, it's a backwater to a river. And you can see behind me here, I've got a bunch of open water. It's been extremely warm lately, so some of that water heats up, there's still some current back here, and that water opens up. That's the whole reason I'm wearing bibs today. Not because it's cold, because it's 44 degrees, but these suckers float. And I'm alone, and if I go down, I, I want to float. I hope I float. So for safety purposes, I put my bibs on and drilled holes all the way up to the edge of the water so I can determine where the safe ice ends. And um, I think we're going to fish fairly close to the open water, but not right next to it. I'm, I'm not feeling that risky. That is it. I'm only putting it down, shoot, maybe even less than that. I'm literally putting it down two feet, but it's only three feet here, so it's kind of deep. Alrighty. It's been about two hours, zero flags. I've basically just been house and beef jerky and drinking coffee. Uh, I moved one of my tip-ups out a little bit deeper, just to like five feet. It's like five feet in the middle of this, this little backwater. And then I kept my one eye fish Pro still kind of by the bank in three feet of water. So I don't know if it's a timing thing, if they just need to run through, if it's too early in the season yet, but it's just, it's quiet. It's way too quiet. So I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Fish on, fish on, and it's a little snaker. Not what we're after, but it's a fish. See ya, buddy. Oh, the best thing about little pike is they just flop all over crazy like, and if you had any knots in your line, they, they just get them out for you. See that, it's just straightened, straightened my line right out. Oh, okay. That's not good. Strike one, strike two, strike three. I struck out today. <sighs> today was tough. Today did not go as planned. Uh, I fished out on this spot before and had a lot of success. Uh, potentially, you might have seen last winter. Last night! Last night! The sun is setting, fish tacos oh. are on the stove. Okay, we're gonna get this fish unhooked really quick. Literally, two flags just popped up. We'll get on these other tip ups right now. Oh, look at that. Oh, yes! Oh, yes! Oh, yes! Yes! Let's yes! go get those other tip ups. Right. Myself and my buddy Ryan, we fished on here and we just crushed big pike and it was a blast. That was a little bit later in the year so maybe it's a little too early but um, I had high hopes going into the day. And when I got home and I started editing this footage, uh, I basically had all the footage and I was dragging it toward the trash can because I was like, one dinky pike, bad day of fishing, see you later. And I do this all the time. Like I'll have a bad day of fishing or filming and I just scrap it, I delete it, I never edit it, never make a video out of it. Um, but today just, it felt different, you know what I mean? I was like, no, I'm posting this, I'm showing this. And that's basically because when I originally started this channel, 
uh, I wanted it to be a little bit more real. You know what I mean? I want to show the failures. I don't want it just to be an average fishing show, just show the best days, you catching fish. I want it to be real, raw emotion, and at the end of the day, show the good, the bad, and the ugly. Today was the ugly, we did not catch them. And that's fishing, you know what I mean? That's fine with me. I'll definitely be back, especially later in the year because I feel like it's gonna pick up. So this is just a bad day fishing. I'm glad I got to show you this, but what I'm really excited about is to kind of flip the page go to a new chapter and start a brand new adventure. So I'm not gonna tell you everything, but tonight, literally within hours, I'm gonna head out of here and uh, make like a 14 hour drive with my good buddy Ryan, who I was just recently talking about. So I wanna say like a month ago, my good buddy Brent Lopez, you've seen him on the channel before, uh, reached out to the boys, uh, all our good buddies, and kind of planned this trip. So huge shout out to you, Brent. You did a bunch of back end work. You booked the Airbnb, you coordinated with 10 knuckleheads, um, and now we're all heading off 12 hours away to fish in a crazy awesome remote area. So I'm not gonna tell you where we're going and exactly what we're gonna be targeting, but I can tell you we're ice fishing. We're gonna be using giant heavy rods. Heavy, heavy, heavy. We're gonna be using really big spoons giant hair jigs, and probably even some delicious looking tubes. So if this is any hints or any indications to you on what we're doing, what we're gonna be targeting, um, then you already know. But if you don't, it's gonna be epic. To tie it all together, a bad day of pike fishing is always better than a good day at work. Um, I'm excited to show you the good, the bad, and the ugly, and I'm extremely excited to show you guys this trip that's coming up here soon. So um, yeah, let's meet up with Ryan, hop on the road, and um, I'm sure I'll take you guys along with. So. Let the adventure begin. Are you ready? Yes, are you I'm ready. ready. I am ready. Where are we going? We're going to Lake Trout City, baby. Let's do this. 11 hours, no stops. Straight. Next stop, Lake Trout City, boys. Let's get it. Truck's packed, energy drink strapped. We're locked, we're loaded. We're ready to put some time behind the wheel. So. Uh, current time check. 1.44 in the morning, something like that. I think we're in like Fargo, North Dakota. Um, it's only 2 a.m. and we've got many more hours to go. Uh, I think we've got to probably saw, I don't know, seven or eight hours to go. The energy drinks are wearing off and this is gonna be a long night. It's gonna be a grinder. How did that feel? I got room for some more bangs now. <laughs> <laughs> Probably woke you up to go outside. Dude, yeah, it's really cold out there. It's cold. Yeah. Yes. Feeling good. Feeling good. Feeling good. What'd Just you get uh, from the gas station? A lemon drop. Oh, yes. Diabetes is mm -hmm. in full swing for us mm -hmm. after this trip. We've got some full throttles. We've got some yeah. bangs. Yeah, things are looking up. Things are looking up. Talk to me about what I picked up here. Classic. Well, Samuel made his way into the old uh, gas station factory here. Picked us up a little Dots pretzel. Gourmet road trip staple. Pride of the Dakotas right there. Nice. How long do we have left? Uh, 430 miles to go. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Dots pretzels, 400 miles. We got it. Talk to me. Well, Current time check. How like, you feeling? Oh, it's like nine. I'm feeling a little zapped, but I still got a lot of bang in my veins. So <laughs> I'm still pretty good. I'm really cold. I need a coat. <laughs> but we're here. we're here. Check this out. Check this out. This is freaking crazy. Um, our filming coming in here did not do justice of what we've seen. Uh, this is like. This is like no country I've ever ice fished before. This is crazy. The opportunity to come out here and check this out with a bunch of good buddies. I got a whole bunch of buddies coming in later. And then obviously Ryan is here too. Like this is, this is insane. So I'm so excited. The country out here alone is worth the trip. And um, yeah, we are definitely, 
definitely not in Minnesota anymore, boys. First and foremost, huge shout out to Ryan Pincall. If you haven't checked him out on YouTube yet and Instagram, please check him out, give him a follow. He just murdered that whole drive, whole night through. He drove all night through. I definitely snoozed a couple times and woke up to freaking beautiful mountains, beautiful foothills. We are definitely not in Minnesota anymore. We pulled off on the side of the road, at kind of like a little lookout. And it's just beautiful. The country out here is insane. I haven't spent much time out west, so um, uh, this is all, wow, just, look at that, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. I don't have a very long lens, so I feel like my camera is just like not doing justice, but this is, this is ridiculous. From where I'm standing right here too, I can see two small groups of ice fishermen down there, so there's like nobody out here, but. There's people ice fishing. Be out here! We out here. Move ahead. Oh my pretty babe. Something ain't right. Got to find a way to move ahead. Oh my pretty baby